Niyama Sanskrit, Niyama literally means positive duties or observances. In Indian traditions, particularly yoga, Niyamas and its complement, Yamas, are recommended activities and habits for healthy living, spiritual enlightenment and liberated state of existence. It has multiple meanings depending on context in Hinduism. In Buddhism, the term extends to the determinations of nature, as in the Buddhist Niyama Dhammas. Hinduism Virtues are extensively discussed in various ancient and medieval era texts of Hinduism. In its yoga school, they are described in first two of eight limbs steps, branches, components. The first limb is called yamas, which include virtuous self-restraints the, the second limb is called niyamas which include virtuous habits, behaviors and observances the, these virtues and ethical premises are considered in Hinduism as necessary for an individual to achieve a self-realized, enlightened, liberated state of existence moksha. Five Niyamas In Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, the Niyamas are the second limb of the eight limbs of yoga. Sadhana Pada verse 32 lists the Niyamas as Sakha, Sakha purity, clearness of mind, speech and body Santosa, Santosa contentment, acceptance of others and of one's circumstances as they are, optimism for self Tapas, Tapas austerity, self-discipline, persistent meditation, perseverance Svadaya, Svadaya study of self, self-reflection, introspection of self's thoughts, speeches and actions Isvarapranadana, Isvarapranadana contemplation of the Ishvara God, Supreme Being, Brahman, True Self, Unchanging Reality, Attunement to the Supreme Consciousness. Ten Niyamas In the diverse traditions and historical debate within Hinduism, some texts suggest a different and expanded list of Niyamas. For example, the Shandilya and Virua Upanishads, the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, verses 552–557 in Book 3 of the Tirumandiram of Tirumular suggest ten niyamas, in the sense of positive duties, desirable behaviors and discipline. The Hatha Yoga Pradipika lists the ten niyamas in the following order, in verse 1.18. Tapas, tapas persistence, perseverance in one's purpose, austerity Santosa, Santosa contentment, acceptance of others and of one's circumstances as they are, optimism for self Astikya, Astikya faith in real self Jnana yoga, Raja yoga, belief in God Bhakti yoga, conviction in Vedas, Upanishads Orthodox school. Dana, Dana generosity, charity, sharing with others Isvarapujana, Isvarapujana worship of the Ishvara God, Supreme Being, Brahman, True Self, Unchanging Reality Siddhanta Vakya Sravana Siddhanta Vakya Sravana or Siddhanta Sravana, Siddhanta Sravana listening to the ancient scriptures Re, Re remorse and acceptance of one's past, modesty, humility Mati, Mati think and reflect to understand, reconcile conflicting ideas Japa, Japa mantra repetition, reciting prayers or knowledge Huda, Huda or Vrata Vrata Huda, Huda rituals, ceremonies such as yajna sacrifice Vrata, Vrata fulfilling religious vows, rules and observances faithfully, some texts replace the last niyama of Huda with Vrata. The niyama of Vrata means making and keeping one's vows resolutions, which may be pious observances. For example, a promise to fast and visit a pilgrimage site is a form of Vrata. The education process in ancient India, where Vedas and Upanishads were memorized and transmitted across generations without ever being written down, required a series of Vrata Niyamas over a number of years. Other numbers of Niyamas At least 65 65 ancient and medieval era Indian texts are known so far that discuss niyamas and yamas. Most are in Sanskrit, but some are in regional Indian languages of Hindus. The number of niyamas mentioned in these texts range from just 1 to 11, however 5 and 10 are the most common. The order of listed niyamas, the names and nature of each niyama, as well as the relative emphasis vary between the texts. 
For example, Sriprashna Samhita discusses only one niyama in verse 3.22, and that niyama being ahimsa. Shiva Yoga Dipika, Sharada Talaka, Vasishtha Samhita, Yoga Kalpaladika, Yajnavalka Smriti, and many others, each discuss ten niyamas. Bhagavata Purana discusses eleven niyamas, with kind hospitality of guests, to one's best ability, as an additional virtuous behavior. Other texts substitute one or more different concepts in their list of niyamas. For example, in the five niyamas listed by Markandeya Purana in verse 36.17, Matanga Parameshvaram in verse 17.31 and Pashapada Sutra in verse 1.9, each suggest Akrata non-anger as a niyama. Many of the texts match Patanjali's five niyamas. Ahimsa is the most widely discussed ethical theory, and highlighted as the highest virtue by majority of these texts. Topic: Overlap between yamas and niyamas. Some yamas restraints, the don'ts, are understood as reverse of niyamas, attitudes, behaviors, the dose in hatha yoga pradipika. For example, ahimsa and mitahara are called as yama as well as niyama in verse 1.17 and 1.40. The text calls ahimsa non-violence and non-injuring anyone by one's actions, words or in thoughts as the highest virtuous habit, mitahara moderation in one's eating and drinking habits as the best personal restraint, and sadasana as the foremost of asanas in verse 1.40. Buddhism <inaudible> 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 In Buddhist commentary from the 5th to 13th centuries CE, we find the Panyukavita Niyama, fivefold Niyama, which occurs in the following texts. In the Atthasalini 272-274, the commentary attributed to Buddhahosa on the Dhammasangani, the first book of the Theravada Abhidhamma Pitaka. In the Sumangala Vilasini DA 2.431, Buddhahosa's commentary on the Diga Nikaya. In the Abhidhamavatara PTSP.54, a verse summary of Abhidhamma by Buddhahosa's contemporary, Buddhadatta. Abhidhamamatika Internal Commentary, p. 58. The Abhidhamma Matika is a matrix of abstracts for the Abhidhamma, with lists of pairs and triplets of terms from which the whole of the text can theoretically be reconstructed. The passage on the Niyamas is from an internal commentary on the Matika associated with the Dhammasangani the Niyamas don't appear to be mentioned in the matrix itself, but only in this appendix, and was composed in South India by Kolaratha Kasapa Abhidhamavatara Puranataka p. Composed by in Sri Lanka by Vasisara Mahasami c. 13th century or Sariputta c. 12th century. This text is a commentary on the text of the Abhidhamavatara Namarupa Parishado so is technically a sub-sub commentary. This commentary is an incomplete word-by-word -word commentary. Utu Niyama the constraint of the seasons, i.e. in certain regions of the earth at certain periods the flowering and fruiting of trees all at one time the blowing or ceasing of wind, the degree of the heat of the sun, the amount of rainfall, some flowers like the lotuses opening during the day and closing at night and so on. Bija niyama, the constraint of seeds or germs, i.e., a seed producing its own kind as barley seed produces barley. Kamaniyama, the constraint of kama, i.e., good actions produce good results and bad actions produce bad results. This constraint is said to be epitomized by Dhammapada, verse 127, which explains that the consequences of actions are inescapable. Sitaniyama the constraint of mind, i.e. the order of the process of mind activities is the preceding thought moment causing and conditioning the succeeding one in a cause and effect relation. Dhamma-niyama the constraint of dhammas, i.e. such events like the quaking of the ten thousand world systems at the Bodhisattva's conception in his mother's womb and at his birth. At the end of the discussion summing Galavilasini passage the commentary says that Dhammaniyama explains the term Dhammata in the text of the Mahapadana Sutta DE.12 cf. S12.20 for a discussion of the use of the word Dhammanyamata in the suttas in these texts the fivefold Niyama was introduced into commentarial discussions not to illustrate that the universe was intrinsically ethical but as a list that demonstrated the universal scope of Patika Samapada. 
The original purpose of expounding fivefold niyama was, according to Leti Sayadaw, neither to promote or to demote the law of karma, but to show the scope of natural law as an alternative to the claims of theism. C.A.F. Rhys Davids was the first Western scholar to draw attention to the list of Panyukavita Niyama, in her little book of 1912 entitled Simply Buddhism. Her reason for mentioning it was to emphasize how for Buddhism we exist in a «moral universe» in which actions lead to just consequences according to a natural moral order, a situation she calls a «cosmodicy» in contrast with the Christian theodicy. In Mrs. Rhys Davids' scheme the Niyamas become Kama Niyama action", consequences of one's actions Utu Niyama time, season", seasonal changes and climate, law of non-living matter Bija Niyama seed", laws of heredity Sita Niyama sad face, mind", will of mind Dhamma Niyama law". nature's tendency to perfect this is similar to the scheme proposed by Leti Sayadaw. Western Buddhist Sangharakshita has taken up Mrs. Rhys David's conception of the Niyamas and made it an important aspect of his own teachings on Buddhism. Spelling In Pali the word is spelled both Niyama and Niyama, and the Pali Text Society Dictionary says that the two forms have become confused. It is likely that niyama is from a causative form of the verb ni square root i. See also, karma in Buddhism